We're going to have another story. This is the story about Ping by Marjorie Flack and Kurt Wise. You can tell that this book is really old. I've had it for many, 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 many years. It's a very, very old book that even though as old as it is, it was written even long before that. If this book was written almost a hundred years ago, that's even before I was born. Yeah, it's very old. This is a story about Ping. Ping is the name of this duck. And the story is set in a country called China. Now you may have heard about China. China is this huge country in Asia and it's across the ocean from us. It's pretty far away. So we're gonna see how things are different in a different time because it was over a hundred years ago and a different place because every place in the world has a different culture. That's how people live. So we're going to see how it's different. Okay? But this is a story about a duck. Now let's think, do you think this is a made up story? Let's look for clues along the way. Now, if we find the duck talking, that would tell us it's definitely a made up story. But if we see the duck doing just regular old duck things, and people doing regular old people things, then this, we could say that this is a story that could be a realistic fiction where it might be made up and what the author thinks it could have been like. Okay, let's find out and let's look for clues. The story about Ping. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful young duck named Ping. Ping lived with his mother and his father and two sisters and three brothers and 11 aunts and seven uncles and 42 cousins. Whew, that's a lot. Their home was a boat with two wise eyes on the Yangtze River. Ah, you see the eyes? Now, in this culture, in this place, in this time, the boats had eyes painted on them. In their culture, they used to say that the boats with the eyes, the eyes helped the boats see so they wouldn't get lost, so they wouldn't run into things, so they could be safer. So they painted eyes onto the boat. Now, do you think the eyes really help? No, but it's a nice story. And that's what they did. It was just something to help them think that they were being safe, just as a reminder. And the Yangtze River really is a river in China. So this could have happened. Now let's look at this boat. This boat looks different from the way we have boats now, right? And this part back here, this rounded part, that's actually a house where people could live. And then they would live under the deck here. So this is a houseboat. Each morning as the sun rose from the east, Ping and his mother and his father and sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles and his 42 cousins all marched one by one down a little bridge to the shore of the Yangtze River. All day long they would hunt for snails and little fishes and other pleasant things to eat. But in the evening, in the evening, as the sun set in the west, la 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 le would call the master of the boat. Quickly, Ping and all his many family would come scurrying. Quickly, they would march one by one up over the bridge and onto the wise-eyed boat, which was their home on the Yangtze River. Ping was always careful, very, very careful, not to be the last, because the last duck to cross over the bridge always got a spank on the back. There's the sun setting. Here's the master. Does he look like people that we have living around us today? No, that's unusual clothes and an unusual hat. But that's what they wore back then in that place. And I'm not going to say whether the spanking is a good thing or a bad thing, but that's what they did. And I think he did it to teach the ducks to come when they were called. But one afternoon as the shadows grew long, Ping didn't hear the call because at that moment, Ping was wrong side up trying to catch a little fish. I love this line, as the shadows grew long. What does that mean? Well, let's think. 
Have you noticed when you're outside and it's lunchtime and the sun is right overhead, your shadow is very, very small. But later in the day, as the sun is setting, your shadows grow long. They're long in the morning when the sun's rising and then they're very small. And then they're long again as, as the sun is setting. So when the author says, as the shadows grew long, he's saying when it's getting close to sunset. And what happens at sunset? The master's calling all the ducks. By the time Ping was right side up, his mother and his father and his aunts were already marching one by one up over the bridge. By the time Ping neared the shore, his uncles and his cousins were marching over. And by the time Ping reached the shore, the last of his 42 cousins had crossed the bridge. Ping knew he would be the last, the very, very last duck if he crossed the bridge. What do you think is going to happen? Do you have a prediction? Let's see. Let's see if it happens. Ping didn't want to be spanked. Let's see. So he hid. Ping hid behind the grasses, and as the dark came and the pale moon shone in the sky, Ping watched the wise-eyed boat slowly sail away down the Yangtze River. Oh no! All night long, Ping slept near the grasses on the bank of the river with his head tucked under his wing. And when the sun rose up from the east, Ping found... He was all alone on the Yangtze River. There was no father or mother or s no sisters or brothers, no aunts or uncles, and no 42 cousins to go fishing with Ping. So Ping started out to find them swimming down the yellow waters of the Yangtze River. As the sun rose higher in the sky, boats came. Big boats and little boats, fishing boats and beggars boats, houseboats and raft boats. And all the boats had eyes to see with but nowhere could Ping see the wise-eyed boat, which was his home. Do you see these sails? These sails, the wind blows into the sails and that helps push the boat. But those are different sails from the kind that we see nowadays, right? And here's another houseboat, but that's not his houseboat. And the flat boat is called a raft. Then came a boat full of strange, dark fishing birds. Ping saw them diving for a fish for their master. As each bird brought a fish to his master, he would give it a little piece of fish for pay. Closer and closer swooped the fishing birds near Ping. Now Ping could see shining rings around their necks. Rings of metal made so tight the birds could never swallow the big fish they were catching. Ah, so the master had trained the birds when they were little to fish and the, the ring was put on when they were little and as they got bigger the ring was so tight they couldn't swallow the fish but if they brought the fish to the master they would get to eat a small piece of fish wow that's an interesting way to do fishing isn't it i've never tried it that way swoop splash splash the ringed birds were dashing here and there all about ping so down he ducked and swam under the yellow water of the Yangtze River. When Pink came up to the top of the water far away from the fishing birds, he found little crumbs floating, tender little rice cake crumbs, which made a path to a houseboat. As Ping ate these crumbs, he came nearer and nearer to the houseboat. Then, splash! There in the water was a boy a little boy with a barrel on his back, which was tied to a rope from the boat, just as all boat boys on the Yangtze River are tied to their boats. In the boy's hand was a rice cake. Oh, 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 cried the little boy, and up dashed Ping and snatched at the rice cake. <laughs> this is interesting, right? Do any of you boys have haircuts like this? Like that looks like his whole head is shaved except for two tiny little braids or ponytails. Yep, that's not a popular fashion now, but I guess it was popular back then in that country. That was one of their customs. And look at his floaty. So when kids are learning to swim here, we might put floaties or uh, 
uh, arm wings on them to help float them. And look, he has a barrel tied to his back. That's his floaty. And the barrel is tied with a rope. Where does the rope go? And the rope is tied to the boat. Quickly, the boy grabbed Ping and held him tight. Quack, 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 cried Ping. Oh, 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 yelled the little boy. Ping and the boys had made such a splashing and such a noise that Ping's father came running and the boy's mother came running and the boy's sister and brother came running and they all looked over the edge of the boat at Ping and the boy splashing in the water of the Yangtze River. <laughs> now they have interesting clothes too, right? So that's not clothes like we would wear. And their haircuts are different. Look, the man looks like his head is partially shaved and he has a pigtail down the back. And the girls looks pretty normal, but the boys, I can't really see. It doesn't look like he has the two pigtails like this. Maybe he's old enough that he has one pigtail like his dad. Then the boy's father and mother pulled at the rope, which was tied to the barrel on the little boy's back. They pulled and they pulled and up came Ping and the boy onto the houseboat. Ah, a duck dinner has come to us, said the boy's father. I will cook him with rice at sunset tonight, said the boy's mother. No, no, my nice duck is too beautiful to eat, cried the boy. The boy wanted to catch Ping, but he doesn't want to eat him. What do you think he wanted? Maybe just to have a duck as a pet. But the family is saying, hey, duck tastes pretty good. Let's find out what happens. What do you think is going to happen to Ping? Do you have a prediction? Do you think he's going to get eaten? Let's find out. But down came a basket all over Ping, and he could see no more of the boy or the boat or the sky or the beautiful yellow water of the Yangtze River. All day long, Ping could only see the thin lines of sun which shone through the cracks in the basket, and Ping was very sad. After a long while, Ping heard the sound of oars and felt the jerk, jerk, jerk of the boat as it was rowed down the Yangtze River. Do you know what oars are? Let's see if we can find a picture with oars. Oars, um, don't see it here. Are these things here? Oars are used to help propel, see the oar, it's like a paddle. And you use two of them together and it helps to paddle yourself in the water. So the boat is being rowed. I guess this wind isn't blowing it the correct direction so they had to row it. Soon the lines of sunshine which came through the cracks of the basket turned rose color. And Ping knew the sun was setting in the west. Ping heard footsteps coming near to him. The basket was quickly lifted and the little boy's hands were holding Ping. Quickly, quietly, the boy dropped Ping over the side of the boat and Ping slipped into the water, the beautiful yellow water of the Yangtze River. Yeah. So the boy didn't want Ping eaten. He wanted to save his beautiful duck. Then Ping heard this call. La 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 la. Ping looked and there near the bank of the river was the wise-eyed boat which was Ping's home. And Ping saw his mother and his father and his aunts all marching one by one up over the little bridge. Swiftly Ping turned and swam, paddling toward the shore. Now Ping could see his uncles marching one by one. Paddle, paddle, Ping hurried toward the shore. Ping saw his cousins marching one by one. Paddle, paddle, Ping neared the shore, but as Ping reached the shore, the last of Ping's 42 cousins marched over the bridge, and Ping knew that he was late again. Oh, what do you think he's going to do? Do you have a prediction? Is he going to hide? Is he going to go through that ordeal again, all the, all the problems? Let's find out. But up! marched Ping up over the little bridge and spank came the spank on Ping's back.
Then at last, Ping was back with his mother and his father and two sisters and three brothers and 11 aunts and seven uncles and 42 cousins, home again on the wise-eyed boat on the Yangtze River. Oops. What happened here? My picture froze. Let's see if I can get it back. There. Then at last, Ping was back with his mother and his father and two sisters and three brothers and 11 aunts and seven uncles and 42 cousins, home again on the wise-eyed boat on the Yangtze River. Whew, Ping made it home. Are you happy for him? Now, I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong to, to give the ducks a spank or anyone a spank, but I know it was custom at that time. Do you think it taught Ping a lesson? that even though he didn't want to get a spank, that it was better to be home with his family? Yep. Sometimes consequences aren't pleasant, but some of them are necessary, some of them, to teach us a lesson. What do you think the author wanted us to learn? Do you think he wanted us to learn to, even though some things are difficult, that maybe it's the right thing anyway? Maybe. So what do we think? Is this a real story? Well, I would say this is about things that could have happened because there were people that lived like this at that time in that place. This was 100 years ago. So it could have happened something like this. And how is their life different? You know, we still, we have people that might live on a boat but our houseboats don't look like this houseboat, does it? But they had different clothes, different haircuts for sure, and a different way of doing things. Well, because life is different at different times and different places. And the more we read, the more we get to learn about how things are different. And we can appreciate the cultures around the world and appreciate what we have. Okay, so that's our story for today. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.